Yo, what's up guys, Catmaster here with another quick recipe, super helpful, especially for new players, but even if you're seasoned, you can probably learn a new one here, because most people aren't aware of these. Most people are only aware of the flat elemental damage to spells recipe for caster weapons, which GGG has removed in this patch. So with that recipe gone, there's still a number of very useful recipes in the game, and I'm going to give you my top five of the recipes that you should know, especially if you're new to Path of Exile, you might not know what a render recipe is. It's basically the formula for what you get back from the vendor when you sell certain things. Now, normally you get currency items, but if you sell specific combinations of items, you get other things back. So one of the most basic recipes, which is my rank five in terms of usefulness, is the three for one life flask or mana flask recipe. So if you have three life flasks of the same tier, for example, three small life flasks, you can turn them into a medium life flask. But then if you want to vendor three medium life flasks, you can turn them into a large life flask. And you can continue this upgrade all the way to hallowed life flasks. And every time the life recovery per second goes up massively. If you want more details on flasks and how strong they really are if you unlock their full potential, check out my video that I'll link in the description down below. Now, next up is the recipe for increased spell damage on wands. Yes, the flat elemental damage recipe is gone, but you can still guarantee a small amount of increased spell damage if you're completely out of luck early and just need a small boost. It works very similar to the recipe for increased physical damage on weapons, which is the weapon, a magic belt, and a whetstone. You can also use this with a rare belt for a higher roll for the serrated instead of the heavy. And if you have a unique one, you could also use the unique, but it's usually not worth it. And it does raise the level requirement a little bit more. Now for once, you wanna use your wand base with the favorable socket and a rare chain belt as well as a whetstone to guarantee the adept's prefix for 20 to 29 increased spell damage explicit on a blue weapon. The result is always only one mod on the weapon, so you can't add this to a weapon, but this is a great way if you just didn't find anything good early on. Note that this raises the level requirement to 8. You could always do this recipe with a magic belt for 10 to 19, or even with a unique belt for 30 to 39, but note that the unique belt with the higher mod will also raise the level requirement to 18. And by the time you hit level 18, you probably have something better as essences still exist in the game as a way to deterministically craft rares with one guaranteed mod. Now, next up is the recipe for movement speed on boots. This is a really juicy one. Most people actually know the basic recipe of being able to vendor a pair of white boots with an orb of augmentation and a quick server flask for the runner's prefix on those boots for 10% increased movement speed. But what many people are not aware of is if you already have boots that have movement speed on them, either magic or rare, you can vendor those just the same with an orb of augmentation and one of your spare quicksilver flasks to get the same boot base as a magic item with the same movement speed plus five percent so you can keep upgrading your blue boots all the way up to 30 percent movement speed during leveling if you're really out of luck and you don't get anything good on the ground the item level of the Quicksilver Flask doesn't matter at all, so you can directly use the Quicksilver Flask that you get from Tidal Island as soon as you get your second Quicksilver Flask in Act 2 Den. Unless, of course, you're racing, in which case you would want to use them both in your flask slots. The top two of most useful recipes for leveling is the Magic Helmet with plus one to all minion skill gems. Now, obviously, this is only useful for you if you're playing a minion character, but minion characters are great league starters. A lot of people are going to play Poison SRS and other familiar minion builds, so I feel like this is a really valuable one to include, and you can get this as early as level 11. What you need, though, is quality gems. So probably you won't have these available at level 11 early on, but if you pool your gems with your guild or with your group of players and you exchange you know, what you don't need, what the other people need, you could get quality gems together. You need a total combined quality of 40% on gems with the minion tag. You can check the tags in the second line of the gem right under the header. And as I said, the quality needs to add up 
to 40% or more. Then you vendor your desirable four link base. Make sure you already got a four link. You don't want to waste socketing currency on an item that you make like this because you can pick the base. So directly go for a four link with the right colors and just the gems. Doesn't matter how many it is as long as the sum of quality is 40 or more and all of them have the minion tag. And the result is OMG, the plus one of all minion skill gems taskmasters prefix on your base as a blue item. Note that this plus one level of all minion skill gems, unlike the previous mod that existed on helmets, is global. So you don't even need to socket your gems into the helmet. And you could actually do this with an unsocketed, like with a one socket helmet or something like that. Doesn't really matter because you can have your links on the other gear and this affects all minion skill gems in your build. Now, many of you probably saw it coming already. The most useful leveling recipe top one that is in trade league obviously because in ssf you won't have access to quality gems that early but you could repeatedly farm labyrinth chests in cruel lab to get quality gems of the kind that you need you want to sell gems of one specific type in this case i decided physical but this works with fire cold lightning and chaos just as well as physical again just like with the helmet recipe you need an amount of gems with the specific type tag and combined quality of 40% or higher, just like in the helmet recipe. This recipe works with scepters, wands or daggers. You can even use a staff, although I would not recommend leveling with a staff. You just vendor your weapon and the three gems of which the quality combines to 40% or more and they all have one tag in common. In this case, physical and what results is the Lithomancer's Driftwood Scepter with plus one to all physical spell skill gems. Again, you can do this with all five damage types, physical, fire, cold, lightning, and chaos. And this, just like the helmet mod, applies to all spell skill gems of that type in your build. A lot of minion skill gems have both the minion tag and one specific damage type. So for summon raging spirits, you could use both the helmet and a plus one fire spell skill gems wand or even two of them. Just one quick note from future Catmaster for maximum helpfulness. Don't use the recipe for plus one to level of specific type skill gems on weapons on a low level one from act one or something like that. Because on low item level ones, there is not many mods that they can roll as the item level requirement is higher. And they're very likely to roll one of the specific plus one skill gems mods as these only need item level two and other mods need higher item levels to spawn. Therefore, it will always be cheaper in a trade league to buy a plus one low level wand than to craft one with the recipe I just introduced you to. Once again, keep in mind that you will find essences that can still guarantee flat elemental damage to spells rolls, which will be better than the legacy recipe was anyway, and will also be better for leveling than the plus one skill gems of a specific type. Flat lightning damage to spells essences spawn as early as the muttering tier, which is restricted to mods of level 45 and below, and you can probably find them by the time you enter Act 6. So I hope this was a helpful video for you. Make sure to like it and to comment down below which one of these recipes you didn't know yet, or which one you would have liked me to include. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or come to one of my live streams. I moved a large portion of my live streams to YouTube. We're doing the Faded Connections podcast multiple times in this first month of the league here on YouTube. Just go to my YouTube channel, go to the live tab or even subscribe to the channel so that you get notified. And I'll try and do daily streams, high energy, short and concise before I go live on Twitch and no life for many, many hours. So make sure to tune in, ask your questions there and I'll make sure to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Good luck in 3.21 Crucible. I hope you get some awesome drops and you're really happy with your starter build. And if you're not, I hope you get good gear and some mad currency to do the reroll that you need. Big shout out to my three Patreon supporters, Robert, Lionel, and the new guy who support... I, I really would like to know you, but I, I just literally can't find the list on Patreon where you can find your supporters. But I do appreciate support. If you guys want to help me stay independent from any platform, you can subscribe on Patreon. If not, I appreciate your Twitch sub. I appreciate the YouTube following, uh, super thanks, whatever. Don't feel like obliged you need to financially contribute. It's hard to make it as a content creator in this space, so I do appreciate every support. I get but obviously the content that I make will always be free for the most part 
Big shout out to the Twitch subs as well, and I'll see you in 3.21. If you want to join a guild, I have a guild, by the way. Message me in-game at Catmaster or at Catmaster OP. Bye-bye.